if you felt like your PC is due for an upgrade, well, this is the video for you, because much like a lot of other DCS World players and other gamers, my computer upgrade happened during the unmentionable events of about four years ago. Because the YouTube algorithm hates that word, I won't call what it was, but that's when everybody was stuck at home. Now, I upgraded my PC in January of 2021 to an Intel i7 10th generation CPU, 10700K and so had a lot of people who were stuck at home. So these 2020-21-1 builds are very, very common now. But in 2022-2023, Intel and AMD made huge jumps in performance. That was the 12th and 13th gen processors, 12700, 13600, and so forth. In 2024, everything slowed down. Intel was hoping to release a brand new killer CPU but the Core 200 series are a failure. The AMD 9800X 3D is the only significantly improving processor that improves in the last two, three years of CPUs. Released in fall of 2024, it's still quite expensive. Can you double your FPS with a CPU upgrade? Kind of, I'll talk about that in a second. But there's a few paths to upgrade. If you've got that 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th gen CPU with DDR4 RAM, I've got the path of upgrading that I did to improve my FPS significantly. If you've got a PC with DDR3 RAM, you can get a significant boost by going to that 13th, 14th, or an AMD X3D processor. And something to keep in mind, although this video mentions AMD, I mainly focus on Intel because that's what I've got but the Intel i7 or i9 of the previous generations to 12th gen are slower than the 12th and 13th gen i5 processors. Now, I bought extra memory and video card upgrades over the last few years. I have 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM. I didn't want to throw it away. I was lucky enough to get a 4090 video card which will run faster on a motherboard of a more recent generation because new motherboards have faster PCI Express slots. So my solution was an Intel i5-13600K. This processor doubles the performance over my i7. With a motherboard that supports DDR4 RAM, I was able to bring my memory across and take advantage of the faster PCI Express slot. And if you've got an NVIDIA 30 series card or an AMD card of five or 6,000 series and above, that faster PCI Express slot will speed up your performance. If you've got DDR3 RAM, you can go for a similar build, but with a DDR5 processor. And if you're a baller, you can get yourself a 9800X3D processor, but the 13th and 14th 600K processors are actually, I think, the sweet spot. Now, I generate content, I create videos, I do audio video editing, and for those things, this i5-13600 is more than enough. I evaluated performance, price, and other features, and although the purists are going to say you need the latest and greatest for $500 to $600 for a CPU, that's how much I spent for the whole upgrade. Let's look at the numbers. Right side is the 13600, left side is the 10700. First, the loading into my torture map that you might have seen before. The 13600 loaded about a second and a half faster. On a complex map, that pattern will follow along. The part loading into the actual airplane, the 13600 loads at about 10 seconds, the 10700 loaded at about 12 and a half seconds. From this point forwards, the airplane flies on an altitude hold, and as you look on the FPS measurements, there is about 20 to 30 FPS gain, which is about 20 to 30% from the old CPU to the new CPU. And remember, there's almost no chance to ever double your FPS because the limitation isn't just your CPU, it's also your GPU. But as you can see on the screen, here comes the most torturous part of the map, and that is a whole bunch of cluster munitions going off in this MLRS launch. And if you see the FPS on the left side, 
they tank on the 10th gen CPU whenever those detonate. But on the right side, they never go below 100 FPS. This is absolutely incredible. And that's the doubling of the CPU I mentioned. If you're like me and you've upgraded your video card to an NVIDIA 30 series, if you have 32 or 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, that is DDR4 3200, this upgrade makes total sense. For about $370 US, I was able to get a motherboard, I was able to get the processor and the adapter for my cooler, which means that I could use the same cooler as I had before. The 13600 won't generate more heat than your i7 or i9 that you've had before, but it is so much more robust. And I really don't see a reason for anybody to get a 13700, 14700, unless you've got that extra money kicking around. You can also build out a computer with DDR5 memory, which is faster. But based on my research, it was the extra two or 3%. And I said, I already have 64 gigs of RAM. I'll wait for another two more generations of CPUs because I think this will keep me going for that time and then do a full upgrade in a couple of more years. The fact that this DDR4 compatible motherboard and memory combo is available for Intel users is a great deal. And as for the AMD folks, they've been able to upgrade their AMD 3600 CPU all the way to the AMD, I think it is the 5600, using the AM4 socket, which is absolutely fantastic. That is the most reasonable and the most logical upgrade to do for an AMD user. Now, as you saw on the FPS, performance is below. At lower resolutions, you can get a greater FPS boost. When it comes to VR, using the Reverb G2 or the Pimax Crystal Light, I was able to see 60 FPS go to a stable 90 FPS. Now, if you're not technically savvy and can do the build yourself, most computer shops will do the work for you. And in my case, I didn't even have to reinstall Windows. All I had to do was reinstall drivers, which means that all my settings and everything else were still in place. All I had to do was turn the computer on, install the new drivers, and I was off to fly in DCS and play other video games. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'll be making more coming up and I'll catch you in the next one. Plasma 1945 is out of here.